What's going on everyone? Yes, today is another tour review and yes, the man that stands in front of you is Solid Snake from the epic video game Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Now this figure is actually made by Max Factory Figma, so let's go ahead and see what Figma did. Let's see what they brought to the table, or maybe not so much. So right off the bat, let's go ahead and start looking at details. So as for the face paint, eh, it's okay. It's not the best, but it's pretty nice for the first Metal Gear figure for us to actually get from Figma. And I'll go over that in a little bit more detail shortly. Let me go ahead and focus for you. As for his suit though, they did a really nice job. It's nice gray washes in it. It gives a real nice shadow look. It doesn't look sloppy. I actually really like the paint job. And let me go ahead and turn them to the side. There we go. Let's make sure it's in focus for y'all so y'all can actually see okay. Bring them away a little bit. And like I said, Figma did a pretty nice job for the as on the paint. It looks really good and clean. Alright, turning to the back. And what's cool about this figure, which we will uh, see once I actually go over some of the things, they utilize the tech that they used on the Player Kai figures and kind of brought that same tech to the table for this Figma. So it's some really nice stuff going on. So that is your once over for good old Snake. I'm going to go ahead and show you height comparison real quick. Let me come back. And let's bring Snake back a bit. All right. And here is a Figma Diver figure. And then here is the Metacom Mayfix Catwoman. And I'll go ahead and focus. And there you go. So Catwoman and Snake is pretty much dead on in height. And then as for the Giver, he's slightly taller, but not by much. Uh, but he is a more heftier figure out of all the Figmas I've ever uh, grabbed. He's actually the more bulkier uh, style character, actually. Let's go ahead and move them out the way. And let's go ahead and jump into accessories. Now, as for accessories, Snake actually has to have damn near just as much as uh, the Max Factory Berserk figure with the Berserker armor. He's pretty up there. He's kind of heavy in accessories. So the cool part is he actually get his sneaking box come out a little bit so y'all can see the whole thing he gets a sneaking box which is really nicely done nicely detailed and what I'm probably going to do because I've seen someone else do this on another cardboard style item from a, another toy I think I'm going to photocopy this box and actually make a secondary box for me to just fuck around with so I don't actually damage their original so I'm probably going to go ahead and use that idea that I've seen that person do just so I can keep this intact. But if you look closely, I'm going to go ahead and focus real quick. It's really nicely detailed. Barcodes, directions on what to not to do to the box, what type of box it is. It's really nice. They did a really good job. So that is... <laughs> Excuse me. That is actually the box he get. He's going to get his M16. And it's actually really nicely detailed. Really good job. It's just a jet black. It's nothing spectacular. He's actually going to get a muzzle flash. Kind of like he's firing off the weapon. And this actually goes to his M16 here, just like that. It just pegs right on to the tip of the muzzle. 
and it's actually really really sturdy it doesn't feel loose and it kind of feel like it's snapped over the larger part of the barrel so that's really nicely done you're going to get that you're going to get his handgun this is his tranquilizer gun that he uses in the very first part of the stage to get to play with him and this is also a jet black nothing really spectacular but still nicely uh scoped it all right you're going to get a total of four cigarettes so i pulled one of the cigarettes out and i actually placed it in the cigarette hand and it's actually held really really well and you're going to actually get a right and a left hand to hold the cigarette in so this is really nice and and that's kind of definitely cool for Figma to actually give you extras just in case if you make a mistake and lose any. So you're going to get that. Like I said, you're going to get a right and a left. So there was the actual left and this is the right. So it's technically just identical. And that's the little hole there that you can see that actually placed the cigarette in. And it actually holds nice and snug and it's real easy to place in. So that's really good. To the next hand. Now this particular accessory is kind of like a theft from um, Revoltech. Revoltech did this whole thing where you can actually like have your snake figure hanging as if he was hanging over the ledge hiding from an enemy. Now Figma did the piece a little bit cleaner but in my personal opinion I don't really see this actually work great. I haven't tried it yet but I was just trying to clamp the hand onto it and if you notice Maybe the weight may shift the actual uh, little notch to stay in place, but to be realistic with you, it doesn't feel sturdy at all. So I don't really see this work. And even at the end of the day, even though this is nice and clear, you're still going to have to put something on top of this or use something sticky on the opposite side to actually hold it in place. So I'm going to be honest with you, this particular accessory, uh, I don't really think it's all that great. I think it's just something they decided to throw in there just to use it over again. If that makes any sense. But you do got it. All right. And you're going to get two. You're going to get a left and a right hand of that little weird peg. Okay. You're going to get this right here. And this tool is the actual, uh, actually uh, to shift the eyes, which I will show you shortly. But that's what this tool is for. You're going to get the angry face. And let's see if I can focus to get you a nice close-up. The detail on this angry face is really nicely done. Looks really good. Now, this one doesn't have the movable eyes. The eyes are actually set in one position. And just have them looking over. But the nice, dirty, gritty teeth looks really good. So you're going to get that. And then you're going to get a rack of hands. You're going to get kind of that sprawled out hand. You're going to receive this right here. Hmm. It's just a regular grab hand. You could probably use it like you're twisting on the barrel or the silencer. That would be good for that. Because other than that, I don't really see the purpose of that damn hand. But you do get it. You're going to get the hand to hold under the barrel of the M16. Or actually under his gun hand for the pistol and then this right here is your M16 hand notice the, the fingers pretty long and then you're actually going to receive the tranquilizer gun hand you're going to get that and then this is just an empty spot so you're going to get that you're going to get your standard move this out of the way sorry your standard Figma bag Hold your accessories. Nothing spectacular, just a little zip block that says Figma on it. You're going to get your standard base, which is also, uh, these stands are pretty decent. Uh, you're also going to get a little adapter for the back, which they've been putting that into a lot of their figures now. And you're going to get an extra uh, wrist peg as well. All right. So that is all of the accessories for good old Solid Snake. Now, as for articulation, this is where um, I did a lot of things before I actually decided to shoot the video. 
I took Solid Snake completely apart and checked out all of his uh, articulated points and joints to see what they actually changed and what they brought to the table. Some things are really, really nice. Some things not so much. So let's go ahead and zoom up on ahead. So before I get into that, I just wanted to let you know, like before, a lot of people felt some type of way about the paint job. Uh, personally, it's not great. It reminds me of the same paint job problem with skin tone that was on Kratos or some of the other um, Play Arts Kyle figures we had. It's very dark. Um, and what I've noticed, certain ones may have it lighter than others. So, for example, I did buy two solid snakes. One solid snake doesn't have this heavy shadowing. His is actually a lot more clean. Even when it comes to the beard, the beard is more defined on it. And it just looks nicer. Uh, this particular face is actually a lot darker. Uh, and it's, it's pretty bad. So, this particular shadowing, eh, is probably one of their weaker paint jobs in my personal opinion uh, it doesn't look horrendous I mean when you actually get it in person it doesn't look that bad but it's not great so I'm not gonna sit there and be like oh it look good like cuz it really don't like unless your particular your specific uh, figure just came with not that much paint on it then cool but if yours came heavy such as this you might feel a little bit different about it but getting away from that Articulation points. So, Solid Snake, in order to change his face right below his bandana, you just go ahead and wiggle, pull off, and then now you can actually take the face and pull off. Now, as I was saying before, there is the holes for that little tool to move his eyes. Now, this is why it's bad to have a crappy paint job. Now, it's showing up pretty light on my camera due to the fact that I do have the lighting a little bit heightened. But if you notice, I lift the actual... Let me see if I can grab something small. So, I lift the eyes up to see the pupils better. The pupils when you up. actually line with the face, like he's looking straight forward, you can barely even see this eye due to the heavy paint on the eye. So, this is why that's actually not a great thing that's going on because you damn near can't even see his eyes or he just look cockeyed due to the shadowing. So, that's why I'm saying that it's not the best. As for moving the eyes around, it's easy when you get in the move, move the actual eye in the socket. But the problem is, once you try to remove this, you end up moving the eye the wrong damn way anyway. So, you have to keep readjusting it. So, this can be a pain in the ass within itself. They should actually put the little pegs where you kind of move it with your fingernails. I find that to be a little bit better or just easier to maneuver. But they gave that particular style. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other face back on. And show you more of the articulation. I just want to show you that since I was already up there. Alright. So his bandana can actually sway left and right so it's just like the, the play arts cow figure so you can actually make the bandana either blow upwards or to the side left or right so it's totally up to you whatever you're comfortable with and that sits on a kind of a, a slightly large ball joint which is a good thing so you actually can move it a lot easier versus just some simple peg in okay on his head if I'm not wrong, I think it's a ball joint in the head itself. It's kind of hard. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's a peg. So the peg goes into the head and then it's on a uh, hinge that goes into the neck. So Snake can actually look about that far down and about that far up due to just moving that particular part of the joint. When you're adding the neck into play, he look about that far down, which is actually really, really nice. Looks down pretty good. Let me go ahead and bring this back. Sorry. So he can look about that far down. Now looking up, he can look up quite a bit due to the fact that since this figure is meant to be 
in poses like he's crawling on his stomach they made sure they gave you a nice amount of range it does create a crappy gap but you won't see that crappy gap anyway if you got the toy laying on the stomach if you look in the back you can kind of see how this joint is designed it's like a it, the peg I'm sorry the swivel is actually just further back on the neck or on the shoulder blades that's how you actually get that larger range of looking upwards so his hair won't get in the way because even if you push his face down he still can go pretty far back all right so you get that now going to his shoulders you have a peg oh i'm sorry you have an actual uh is that a peg i think that's a peg let me see yeah it's a peg sorry so you have a peg going into the cavity of the body and then you have it sitting on a ball joint like so okay and that's just, just an easy snap on so nothing is wrong but that's how you got that going on so you can move the shoulder that high up that far down that far forward that far back so you have a nice range dealing with the shoulder itself now going to the elbow you can swivel this you can swivel this at the lower half and at the higher part of the bi well sorry the lower half of the bicep the upper part of the forearm as for the bend it is very nice nice range that's damn near a revolt tech bend like that's really nicely done really good job and what i meant by they brought some of the play arts kai mentality or not mentality i'm sorry the Play Arts Kai uh, signature scopes, uh, that's with the snake figures, to this. They actually did the same thing where they made it, they made it where you have your elbow pad kind of like sticking out and then you have the joint in there. So it's hidden with that part when it's actually closed. So they literally brought a Play Arts Kai uh, layout of the toy to this toy, which was actually really smart. This looks flush, looks nice. Uh, as for the wrist joint, he get about that much to go up, this much to go down, and then you can clearly do a full 360 either at the upper part of the joint or the lower part of the joint, either or. Now, coming down to his abdomen, let me go ahead and bring this camera down. This is reason why I took the figure apart. So this is where it's bad and this is odd because due to the fact they was trying to make more articulation, they end up making it kind of shitty. Um, so for the most part, this part is going to be pretty loose due to how it's designed. Uh, you're going to get about that much tilt to the side, that much tilt to the side. Can't really go far to the back too much, but he actually get, he can go about that far up. But if this is the thing, you can actually lift up his abdomen and then have him lean more forward kind of like he's sneaking now the thing is clearly oh let me pop it back on sorry about that oh hold on this is what i meant by crappy design this they could have kept i could have definitely did without uh this particular tech it's pretty shitty so you can see it for yourself it's designed where one end is further back on the body and then the other end is actually closer to the body so it acts it act as an actual like a kind of a a collapsing uh collapsing joint so that way you can actually lift it up and do the extension or push it down and that's due to the fact of like i said making him look like he's hunched or you actually uh, having him be on the ground and be able to lift up his other part of his body. Let me go ahead and fix this joint real quick. But this is what I meant. Like, they could have definitely did without that joint. It's pretty shitty. I don't really care for it. It's ugly. And then when you get your figure, it may even feel slightly loose due to that particular style joint. So that was a really bad move. Uh, going down, they did kind of a Mayfex thing, uh, slightly different. So 
I've seen this done on a custom before, and I think they kind of used that idea, which wasn't a bad idea um, at all. It's actually a nice improvement, but you're going to get very, very loose when it comes to the waist. So the waist has about that much lean, that much lean, go about that far back, come out that far forward. So not much, but it's very loose because the way it's designed, it's actually meant for you to, if you notice, so that's his regular height, but you can actually extend this as well. And when you extend that, it's meant for you to actually be able to get more range with his legs on how far they go out or even kicking forward. Okay, so like if I lower this back down, look how high his legs actually go lower. So barely go anywhere. But if I actually lift it up, then this leg go out a little bit further. Okay, so and you can actually uh, both all three parts are on ball joints. So ball joint going into the abdomen and the ball joint going into each socket of the thigh. So let's say if you want to do a side kick because his leg can't go out even with the leg extended it still can't actually go out you have to lift up the leg so you're doing like this almost and then they actually put a swivel me at thigh which i actually think this is really nice i actually like that they put a swivel in this because it definitely needs it it looks awkward but that's the only way you can do like an actual high kick the reason why I think this whole layout was kind of over the top for no reason, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the camera back so you can see real quick. The reason why that made no fucking sense to add, I mean, I, I got it what they were trying to do. Uh, and it's not as bad as the, the abdomen joint between the chest and the stomach, but it's still stupid because look how high I can get with Guyver and I don't need to do no funky ass lifting of the pelvis just to get a high kick so I find out to just be dumb um it's another another poor decision um it's not as like I said it's not as bad as the other joint but it's not great so going further down like I said we already told you about the actual swivel here you're going to get a nice bend in the leg okay which most figmas has really nice bands when it comes to the actual knee joint. It's very hidden. You can see it, but it doesn't look bad because it's painted the same um, color as his, his uh, knee pad anyway. Going down to his foot. His foot get about that much range. That much range up. It can pivot side to side, which is actually really nice. Do some wide stances. And then you have a toe joint which also gets a really nice range so out of everything how do i feel about the figure i think it's okay i expect it more not because what i've seen through the prototype shots or uh through the website shots or whatever it's just that i didn't expect these shitty joints this shit is stupid period i'm not going to sugarcoat it I'm not going to say it because I fucking like Metal Gear. This is a really dumb ass decision, which they could have kept. Um, because him moving without that whole lift part is still perfectly fine. If we're able to purchase this many Figmas and not bitch on how the Figma actually lean forward, then I don't see no reason why they didn't. They tried to push extra extraordinary. Uh, range to try to actually get a better pose it, it was kind of a useless uh, shot and it did horribly and maybe they should have did some R&D before they decided to actually release this because over time I can tell you right now it's going to be loose uh, and that's not loose due to the fact of me pulling him apart that's due to the fact of me actually pulling him out the box I pulled him out the box and he was like this I pulled the other one out the box and he still was kind of loose as well. So that's just a poor ass joint. Flat out. So overall, do I think you should pick this figure up? Eh, I mean, you can. If you're, like, if you're a big Metal Gear head and you want a Metal Gear figure, 
Go for it. If it's one known, um, but you have the Play Arts Kai figures, or you buy the Play Arts Kai figures, then stick to your Kai figures. I would have never thought I would say that, but I'm going to be honest with you. The Kai figures, in my personal opinion, is better due to the fact that if they not fucked up, <laughs> so let me go ahead and put that out there. If the Kai figure is not damaged in the box and the arm or leg is falling off it, or fell off and it's just intact, it's a better figure. Because at the end of the day, it's larger, it's better detail, better face scope, better paint job. Um, on the face, not on the body. So I don't want to diss the body because the body is not bad, just the face. Um, but that's, that's what you're going to deal with. So if you just want a small snake, go for it. If you don't really care about having a small snake, pass. But that is my review. Hope this intel actually helped you out on the side if you'd rather have it or not have it. Uh, but continue to collect and shits. Definitely please come back and check out more reviews. I'll have some more coming up this week. I'll be doing the Hot Toys Batman, which I meant to do uh, a lot earlier, but due to work, can't really get to stuff the way I want to. But I will be having up this week guaranteed. And I will be doing a review on Catwoman as well. Uh, surprisingly, even though it's a Mayfex figure, I actually did pretty damn good as a nice figure. I'm actually really shocked. Uh, but beyond all that, Y'all have a great night. Take care.